Welcome to This weekend Whips. It's been a while. Trish is here. Hello. <laughs> Yay, Trish. And the kiddos are on the couch playing their games. Very, oh, so quietly. <laughs> and Abby's home, and he's got all his water, his microwaving, all his cooking done. So, and the phones are not in the house. His phones are not in the house. So, we shouldn't have any loud disruptions this time. <laughs> And more editing for me to do. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about um, Trisha's journey in particular of learning to crochet with me and the projects that we have done and that have kind of um, grown her skills uh, from knowing basic uh, double crochet and a little bit of um, granny square making uh, to learning uh, things like stitch count, uh, stitch patterns, uh, shaping for unfitted garments and fitted garments and uh, we're going to talk about um, at the end we're going to show most of these projects and at the end I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser for our next video where we're going to talk in detail about the design process of our new top that we're going to make which is going to be a new sew crow project that's my terminology for what I love to dabble in is a mixture of sewing uh, combining fabric and sewing with your crochet so, uh, without further ado, first up, um, the first thing that we did together was the uh, Spice of Life blanket. And we also started a crochet along, uh, the mini uh, cowl, which was just the throw size Spice of Life uh, pattern. Um, that was by a different designer. We just used the pattern and kind of got a little group started on the Facebook group on Chain Crochet. So if you haven't joined on Jane Crochet on Facebook, come and join. It's easy to sign up. If you've been a Facebook member for three months or more, you can automatically are approved to join the group. Um, and then uh, we also have the, the, it's Mission Impossible is what I termed the, the crochet along because I was watching Mission Impossibles when I started making the king size version of the Spice of Life blanket for my bed uh, and put out a challenge for someone to crochet against me and we're both kind of stalled out on that project kind of taking a break from it um, but uh, we'll be going back at it strong me and Kathleen uh, to complete uh, be the first to complete the king size uh, Mission Impossible cow uh, so Trish did the throw size I also did the throw size we both use uh, six different colorways of the Karen Cakes uh, yarn and just picked out sticks that we liked uh, the colors of and arranged them however we were in the mood to do. So mine kind of resembles a muted rainbow and Trisha's has a lot of pinks and purples. She didn't bring hers today <laughs> but I'm going to insert a picture after I show you mine. So um, I don't think I've showed you mine completed yet. Uh, it took I don't know how long it took for the throw size, maybe two weeks, because I couldn't put it down. I love seeing the color changes, and it's easy because you just let, I think I did show this a little bit, but I was sitting down when I showed it. Um, you just let the colors uh, just go, go, go. I did uh, a little bit of plan with um, adding in some white to the last uh, colorway or two, because they didn't have any white in them, and I wanted some continuity um throughout with the white so that is mine and then i will show you a picture here of trisha's and then the next project that we did together was a shawl i want to say it's the blossom shawl is the name of it we're not going to talk about it much in detail right now other than um skills and things that trish learned um Trish, do you want to share some of your experience with that? I got to that? use a different type of yarn, which was silk cotton, and it was very nice feeling on your hands yeah. when you um, were crocheting, and it was a great pattern to learn, something new for me, my very first ever um, flower in a shawl, I guess, but it was really, it turned out beautiful, Jenny. 
um, I made mine for Jenny, and it was pretty, and she will Very insert pretty. pictures of yep. that. Here's a picture here. And the one I made for Trish, uh, first of all, the yarn she used was Yarn B, the red yarn, Yarn B from Hobby Lobby, Hint of Silk. And I got it at the clearance sale uh, last year, a Hobby Lobby clearance sale. So it was a terrific buy, um, about 25% of the regular cost. Um, what my, yarn did you use? The on? yarn I used for hers was from Hobie, H O B B I I. Um, here's a picture of hers. Did I already say that? <laughs> no, I think it's a good picture okay. of yours. Yeah, we'll show you a picture of Trisha's because she didn't bring it. Um, so Trisha's yarn uses Hobie, H O B B I I, butterfly. And it's a slow changing color gradient yarn. Um, I believe it's a DK or sport white. And I think it's just an acrylic blend, but it feels like it's got some bamboo to it. It does have a pretty good twist to it, but it's very soft. Um, it doesn't split easy. I really enjoyed using the yarn. Um, as far as affordability, uh, it took one skein to make, and I think I paid about nine bucks for it um, on sale. So it was a little over 500, maybe 545 yards. Um, the color was beautiful. They have maybe five or six different uh, colorways in that yarn. I'll wear it next time to show you. Yeah, next video we're both going to wear our shawls because the stitch patterns used in those shawls are going to be our final project that we're going to uh, show you uh, our supplies for for our next video. So that was Trisha's next project with me. Um, what was your biggest challenge with that shawl as far as the construction? Just you had to follow pattern to the T. To the T. To make sure every stitch counted. Um, yeah. To get it the right as you're adding on. I guess I learned how to add on and to make a different size. To increase it and to shape increase it. increase and mm -hmm. shape the shawl. So that was new to me. Yeah, that was brand new to Trish. So with that, she learned how to use increases to steer her crochet. Um, and that kind of gave her a hint at what shaping a garment is like for a fitted garment. Um, she also learned that flower pattern. And the, mm -hmm. honestly, I'm not sure what skill level you would say that that uh, shawl pattern was. I would say uh, intermediate to advanced, but not expert level. Um, the flower part of it was... Um, very redundant but it's they're also laid in like bricks as opposed to one flower one flower one flower you got flower 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 so um it, the pattern is offset visually and there was no charts to that so we're working on trish learning to read charts because when you get into seeing 80 some rows i think there was over 90 rows to that shawl and um many of them were all the same but you're reading a whole lot of words for one line. It's a whole lot of reading. And to put the pattern down and try to keep going, you have to stop and read the next row. Read the next row. And you're supposed to know over and over again. So really would have been beneficial had they put charts in there um, yes. for readers. So for people who don't want to read all the wordiness. Um, and a chart conveys so many uh, more stitches and visually... Um, you can just see it like a picture and do it uh, if you know the symbols. So that's what we're working on uh, right now is getting Trish acclimated to chart reading. And we'll talk about that more later. Um, so she learned to work with another type of fiber too. And then we went on to making Easter dresses. And this is Trish's finished Easter dress that she made for her granddaughter Harper, who's three. But she made a size six because Harper is... Um, she's not chubby. She's a big build girl. She's very tall. And so Trish made the size six and she used a DK, um, it's one of y yarn bees, yarns at, uh, Hobby Lobby. It's a sport weight. Yeah. It's a, okay. It's a sport weight, which is about the same as a DK, mm -hmm. a little bit difference. 
Um, and Trish does stitch at a little bit looser gauge, so we went off of uh, chest measurement uh, to determine which size to make for Harper. And then you can always adjust the length uh, later. So that dress, we talked about it um, some in our last crochet video, but the pattern is called Morton. And that's the pattern. I think the pictures could have been a little bit bigger or closer up to add more detail. But they're cute. Um, and then she also was able to see charts on the last page. And um, this is a stitch I hadn't done before. What's at the top of these dresses. Um, I just call it a lattice stitch. It's kind of an embossed. And in the end, we did end up putting the elastic thread through there, doubled. I couldn't find the hat, hat elastic. So we used elastic thread doubled and you just weave it in through the double crochet rows, which is every other row through the bodices, the front and the back. Uh, so that does help to shape it more and give it more of a smocked look without distorting the diamond so much. And it kind of creates that bell look uh, when my granddaughter Amora got hers, she said, yay, my, my Belle dress, uh, because hers is yellow, it looks like Belle from, um, is it, what movie, Beauty and the Beast. And, the Beast. <laughs> and she, every day, she likes to dress up as a princess, and if you call her the wrong princess name and ask her, what, who are you today, she'll get upset if you call her Ariel when she's Belle that day. <laughs> So one day we pretended that Nani was a princess and she told me what my princess name was for the day and somebody had uh, said the wrong princess name to me when we were eating and she said she's not so and so she's she's Belle or she's Ariel whatever she named me for that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's a cutie. Right and when I dressed up for my character um, Aunt Penny for my channel I, we'd gone over to visit the kids. And um, Amora was on the phone with her cousin, my other granddaughter, Maggie, and they like to like FaceTime or whatever, uh, video call. And um, Maggie had called me Nani when they were on the phone. And <laughs> Amora said, that's not Nani, that's Aunt Penny. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's so funny. But she knew I was a character that day because I still had on my Aunt Penny wig. Mm -hmm. And I went jokingly to make the Aunt Penny video. So, uh, Amora is quite the character. So is Maggie. They're just so cute. <laughs> All right. So, here's a picture of my finished Easter garments with the kids in them. And uh, that's the end of that project. And next up, we have our pineapple tops. Uh, Trish is going to talk about hers and what she's learning um, in making her pineapple top. And let me show you the magazine. Trish is so sweet. She, I don't use, I've never bought a magazine for subscription. And honestly, I don't think I've ever bought a crochet magazine that you see at Joann's and everywhere. I don't think I've ever bought any crochet or knitting magazines. Um, I've done books before, but never bought magazines. Um, because I'll usually look at something and I'll say, okay, well, I can make that. And I'll just determine what I need to do to make it. Uh, but Trish had ordered me a subscription uh, because she already had a subscription to Crochet Magazine. And we are making these tops, mine's completed, that are on the cover. And Trish is making hers with Yarn B uh, Sugar Wheel Cotton, which is a worsted weight. Oh, Do you know the color name, Trish? Cascade? Cascade color. Um, it's a nice, kind of between an aqua and just a bright blue. Very nice and cheery color. Trish loves blue. So, um, it's constructed in two panels, and then you have a front seam and a back seam, if you so choose to do both seams. And I'll talk about mine and how I only chose one and why. Uh, Trish is going to talk about hers and what she enjoys about the pattern. This is my favorite color. Blue is my favorite color. <laughs> Jenny talk does a that. little bit louder just in case I can. And um, this is the first time I've made me something. So I really have enjoyed this because knowing Jenny has hers already done and it is beautiful. I am excited to get this one done. But I'm on my first panel. 
So, and this, I, Jenny and I decided on this one because of how the pattern was and how um, she showed me in the magazine to look at the, let me show them, Jenny, this pattern. I, I like to read. So I was taking time to read each and every one. But Jenny explained to me if we can just, if I could just figure this part out. How the chart. The chart, it would be so much easier. <laughs> so I was reading, but then once I realized that you just do repetitive rows three through eight, just keep repeating the three through eight, I was like, oh, I got this. I figured it out. So it took me a little bit, but I finally figured it out. So now I'm on my first panel. I enjoy this one because it is just the pineapple and it's pretty simple. Um, you still have to look at the chart, but I don't have to as much now. Now since I've kind of, I've got it and all I got She's to on do, her fourth pineapple row. Right? Yeah. I'm on my I'm fourth repeat. pineapple and then I have to do another panel and then put it together. So I'm excited to get it t done like Jenny's. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, when Trish, when I was telling her, Trish, she, this one has a chart, you know, our, our Morton dresses had a little chart, but they really could have gone farther and done a chart of the whole, uh, bodice, including how to maintain your pattern and increase for the underarms at the same time for your shaping. That would have simplified things a whole lot because the Morton pattern required a whole lot of reading still, um, and counting. Uh, if you have a good chart uh, that's complete, as, that follows right along with the words, you can skip the words and just read your chart. So, um, I think that if somebody's going to go to the trouble of doing a chart, it should be sufficient to get you through the whole project, or at least the most complicated part, like if you like the bodice of that one. The bottom, maybe not do a chart for the whole thing, because it after like the first couple rows, the bottom part of the skirt of that dress is just two rows repeated until you get to the hem. Um, so if someone's gonna go to the trouble of doing a chart, it should cover as much of the pattern instructions as possible within those charts. And if you need two charts, then it would be great if they would do two charts uh, to expand uh, you know, the project. So, uh, when I first was trying to teach Trish how to read that chart, we went over the symbol key and how the gray portions are all the pattern repeat. So the gray portion is what you're going to repeat over and over again. And then in the end, you're going to stop with this lighter part and those are your final two rows uh, because you don't end on a whole number of pineapple repeats. You end up doing a couple more uh, like the start of the next pineapple section to end the pattern uh, in the panel so it's just two panels constructed which is very similar to a lot of the kimonos and uh, kimono cardies i've done uh, on my own and other people's patterns i've seen two panels uh, slapped together and seamed up the back and the front if you want to close it to make it a top or uh, a tunic so this one here, they seam it up the middle of the front. And you see it on the model, picture looks great, but they only give one size opening for the neck opening. And the size opening is seven inches. Well, if you do seven inches front and back from the middle out, seven inches from the middle out and down the back, leave 14 inch opening total for the neck and the, the back of the neck, then it looks great on her, she's a smaller person. But I would almost guarantee, because that looks like longer than seven inches to me, I would almost guarantee that the back of her shirt is riding up in the middle, just like mine did after I did my front and back seams. So I did not like how that looked on me because of the width of the project. It makes the sides um, drape more farther down and it makes the middle of the top ride up on your tummy. And I'm a tummy girl, I'm a tummy and boob girl. So that bothered me that it's like, it just looks sloppy right there in the middle, especially on the front. The back doesn't bother me so much uh, because you know, it can ride above your, your buttocks. But on the front, if you're a belly girl, it starts looking really weird on you down there and draws the eye down there. So what I did is what I do with a lot of my kimono cardies and um, my blanket cardigans, like one of the purple hoodies I made, 
uh, that's a blanket cardigan with a hood. Um, I left it open in the middle. So I had seamed mine up and the seams looked great, but then when I put it on, I didn't like how it looked in the middle and the front. So, and the more I pulled it in the front, the more it made the back hike up and kind of stick out weird at the top of my butt. So I didn't like that. And it made it just look weird. Like I was constantly pulling at it to get it to, to try to lay equal or look good in the front while not lay, making the back look bad. So it was just very complicated. And I ended up taking about 45 minutes to an hour to undo the nice invisible seam I had done on the front. And so what I ended up with was cutting that open. And then I got some grow grain ribbon and just tacked that on today. Yesterday I wore it pinned in the front with a brooch right there. So now I've got grow grain ribbon. I cut on the bias, folded the ends under um, and just tacked on with needle and thread right where I wanted it, right below the bust. So um, this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna insert a full body photo of it because um, you can see almost to the end right there. But it is very elegant. And I, I actually did um, one more pineapple row repeat. So I ended up with six and the start of the seventh pineapple uh, repeat. And it's stitched going from the inside out. So it made it the sleeves a little bit longer like I like, but it also made the garment wider. And that may have affected some of why the middle rode up on me so much with the seam. But now that I've opened it up and have that there, it kind of has more of a drapey, but still a boxy feel. Um, it's so beautiful, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> I do like it. It feels very elegant. It almost feels like lingerie, uh, like an old fashioned bed jacket. Um, and it's one thing about the cotton yarn. This is a worst away cotton. There's not much sheen to it. It's cool for the summer, especially with all the lace to it. Uh, while still having a really pretty elegant design to the stitch pattern with the pineapples. I've never been big on doing pineapples, but I do like it for summer. Um, the cotton, typically cotton, crocheted. Um, I've not worked a whole lot with making, this may be my first garment I've crocheted with 100% cotton. No, it's not. I did another top. I did a top that was a little bit more dense. It was still a lace and it was a worse weight cotton. But I got the, I made the size that uh, my measurements called for. But after I made it, it fit. I washed it, it shrank up and didn't fit me right. And it, it really drew up on the length. So typically with cotton and crochet, because of the weight of the cotton and the density of the cotton, you get a heavier garment so that it tends to stretch as opposed to shrink uh, by the nature of the fiber itself. You shrink a t-shirt because it's 100% cotton, it'll shrink more and more over time. But with crochet, you have that weight and then the lace adds even more drape. So it kind of equals out the shrinkage that you normally get with cotton. So I don't think I'm gonna see a lot of shrinkage with this. But one thing I don't like about the cotton, because it's the worst of weight, the hand is okay. Um, I've not crocheted enough with cotton to really uh, prefer the yarn be, uh, whatever this is, sugar well cotton mm -hmm. uh, solids, as opposed to an acrylic um, or another cotton. I've not done enough work with cottons to prefer this particular brand over another cotton yarn. But I can do, I can say some things I don't like about it in this project. Um, mainly being, this has not been steamed. A lot of my garments I'll steam and blow open the lace. I usually do that with acrylic garments um, to either make it a little bit larger, create more drape, because then it'll lay more like knit, or to open up the lace pattern and make the lace more noticeable, uh, which also grows it. Um, I did not do that with this because I don't think I'm gonna see a lot of benefit and I think it's gonna go back to being bunching up again uh, because of the cotton once it's washed again. It's not like acrylic that you can kill it with steam and it hold that, that stretch and shape and be all nice and blown out and stay that way. It's not gonna kill the cotton. 
uh, it may relax the stitching and open it up some temporarily, but when you wash it again, the cotton nature of it, it's going to draw back up again. So um, the weight does help with opening up the lace of it. But then one thing I don't like, and you can see this here, is how where my arm's been. You get that bunching. So I, I don't care for that. It ends up kind of looking like there was a tension problem there or if it, if, or a purposeful ruffle edge to it. And I didn't intend for that. So um, it does cause it to kind of iron the fabric to the bend of your arm as you're driving, you know, as you're carrying your purse. And if you carry your purse on one side all the time, which I carry mine on my right, you're gonna get it more <laughs> on that arm than the other arm. But it will go back down if you really fuss with it a whole lot. It'll relax again and straighten out. But that's just me and a pet peeve I have with this particular cotton garment and this particular yarn. Uh, I think a good alternative would be cotton and bamboo blend or just bamboo all together, but you get into the bamboo yarns that are 100% bamboo and you're looking at more, uh, not a lot of twist because it doesn't, the twist plies don't stay together as well as you're stitching it um, with bamboo uh, because it doesn't hold its shape as well. It doesn't cling to each other as much and it can be very slippery. So, um, I thought when I went, let me see if this is the next project we're gonna talk about. Yep. Oh, the things that Trish liked about this pattern so far. Do you want me just to read the list that you gave me? Sure. So you don't have to remember. Um, Trish likes uh, how it's easily customizable, which it is. You can just add or take away more or less repeats of the pineapples um, for the width. Uh, it doesn't affect your length so much, but if you're savvy with math, you can always um, add more stitch repeats to the length when you start your project. Um, it's just two simple panels, both the same, uh, one or two seams to do, and she liked uh, the chart. Uh, the chart's uh, thorough and not too intense with too many symbols, so it was a good place for her to start really getting into reading a chart. And when she first started, when I first started teaching her how to read this chart, and here's the key, and this is what this symbol is, this is what that, that symbol is, she still kept, that night we were stitching together, she still kept wanting to go read her rows. And I said, Trish, stop reading, stop reading. <laughs> stop reading. I put the brakes on it. I had to get a little strict with her because that was her tendency was to try to figure out where she had stopped reading and read the next row. And then have to remember that information and stitch across the whole row, which is 222, uh, well, 221 stitches. Uh, so that is a problem when you're first learning to crochet, you have to keep bouncing back to reading a row. Now, she got upset with me. She's like, but you told me I need to know how to read the rows <laughs> because of the shawl that she had done. You know, I, I showed her how to use the post-it note and go line by line. Um, and the shawl didn't have any charts. So she, while you do need to learn how to be able to read a pattern when you're learning to crochet, sometimes, especially a bigger project and no charts, that can be very reading intense and it really stresses you out bouncing back and forth between stitching a row, reading a row, and having to re review a row in the middle of a row, look back at the directions and read that, and hopefully you're reading the right line again. So um, there's just a lot to keep track of. So when you get a simple chart and uh, not a whole lot to the repeat and you can see a picture of it, then just use the chart. So she got upset with me. She's like, but you told me I need to know how to read the row. <laughs> I'm like, that's true. You do need to know how to read it. But if you can see it in a chart, the chart's easier. You peek at it. You learn the repeats. And eventually after, you know, a couple times of doing a pineapple row uh, repeat, then you're not going to have to look at the chart again. You're going to look back at your previous pineapple you did and say, oh, this is what's next. You know, I'm going to do this row again. So it's more intuitive. Um, should not replace your ability to read a pattern and understand it. But I have, I, I've bought a lot of patterns over the years. 
and I have done a lot of reading patterns. I just recently started really getting into using charts uh, because I like to make things that are circular and start in the middle and like a medallion top, my Granny Gone Wild top I designed starts in the middle like a doily and then I square it off and you end up making your square bigger and bigger and you make two squares and you sew it together to shoulders and the sides and you got a top. So um, I just made that up out of my head by looking at a picture of a block I seen. And so I didn't need a chart for that. Um, I just kind of charted it in my mind looking at the close up of the photo. Uh, I couldn't find the author of that pattern, so I just improvised it by looking at what they made. Some people could do that, but if you need to, you can make your own chart um, by doing a close-up uh, shot and looking at a square. But because I like to make things circular that turn into squares, uh, looking at a circular chart of crochet, when I first started looking at those, I'm like, I'm not a chart person. I swore off charts. I'm like, I'm not doing this chart stuff. Um, it's just too complicated. And it looked like just a, a bunch of Chinese in a circular pattern. So that really bothered me. But once I got used to it, um, I learned to read charts better. And now I am loving charts and plan to work on our next design, which we'll get into a little bit here. It is my next SoCro project. Uh, if you have not watched my channel much, I have a section of SoCro uh, playlist of uh, a couple things I've done with sewing and crochet combined for projects. Uh, this would be my first SoCro garment. Um, I say my, but Trish is involved heavily in the process because we're going to customize this uh, to fit both of us. And we're going to get into uh, Trish learning more about body ratios. I've taught body ratios and shown a site before on my channel um it was one of my episodes where my daughter visited and i showed how you know you can take measurements and we're just going to review that again for people who want to learn to either customize patterns for their own body shape or um design your own stuff for wearables and like if you know someone's arm size you can take their arm size based on the percentage body ratio method on stitching or knittingfull.com. You can see body ratios, and if you know their arm size, then you can find out what the neck is and what their chest is, and any other measurement of their body, really, because it's all about ratios for the typical person, I should say. So, we are going to learn to do body ratios next time. Uh, we'll get into that. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to use some software that I downloaded to my laptop to make an official chart for the next design. Whether or not I ever publish this next design, I don't know. I highly doubt it. I've been wanting to get around to publishing my patterns for quite some time, but have not had the time or wanted to devote my energy and time into doing that to sell patterns uh, because I've never really been in this for the money. Don't care about getting my channel monetized. <laughs> And mainly the purpose, you know, why I started my channel on Chain Crochet was to teach people to design and uh, improvise for themselves and not be so pattern dependent. Uh, my thought is the less patterns you have to buy, the more yarn you can get. So, um, and the freer you can feel. Um, you can look at something somebody bought the store bought. Maybe you like the style of it, or maybe you like a particular stitch. Um, but maybe it's cheaply made because it's mass produced and fast fashion. Uh, you can take a snap a picture of it, make one similar for yourself. So uh, it's very freeing. Um, it fuels your creativity, and the more you design, the more ideas come to mind. So. Um, and I do have a couple other uh, designs I've had on hold for a while that I'll probably revisit when the season is right. Because right now is not the season for those particular designs. So, okay, we're going to wrap this up. Um, next time we're going to show you those shawls, which was project number two for Trish. Uh, we'll show you the shawls because we're going to use incorporate the stitch patterns from that shawl. And we're going to make a top, a Socro top with it. So today... We're going to end today with uh, showing you the yarn uh, that we have decided on 
and the fabrics to go with it. Uh, here, let's show your scheme. That ball's kind of a mess. This is Yarn B Sweet Divinity. This is the color Trish picked out. She wanted the yellow. And it's a 100% acrylic, well, no, it's acrylic and nylon blend. Very little nylon. I don't have my specs on, so 20% uh, nylon, 80% acrylic. It's a four weight. Um, it feels great. Yes, it feels, it does feel great. Seems um, one thing about this yarn, because I've worked with it before, and I've actually used this yellow colorway. It's got a nice kettle dye look to it. It resembles a lot of the expensive yarns, like Malabrigo, that you see in the yarn shops. Um, so it has a nice, without looking obvious color changes, like like uh, variegated yarn, like cheap variegated yarns, you get the subtle hues in it. Um, so it does make a nice, um, soft gradient. Uh, tonal yarn like it's kettle dyed and Trish likes the feel of it I do as well I made my daughter a top with this um, yellow one and she loves it and it fit her great um, it does don't you think it feels like a soft cotton like yes. a Pima cotton mm -hmm. it has a nice hand to it um, one thing I've noticed with this yarn though because it does have a softer ply to it than a lot of acrylics. It doesn't have a really, really high twist. It's not splitty, uh, but if you do have dry cuticle uh, corners on your nails, um, it kind of will snag it. You'll feel it catch. It doesn't draw up the yarn, though. It's not that bad, not that snaggy. Um, and it doesn't peel, uh, from my experience with it. It washes and dries easily. Um, it kills quite nicely, so the lace opens up. Uh, you can kill it with your steam iron. Um, there's a great drape to it and for acrylic, uh, because of it not being tightly twisted, I think it breathes a lot better than like, say for instance, I love this yarn, uh, by Hobby Lobby, great for blankets, uh, but I would not make a spring or summer garment out of it. This, while being a worsted weight, um, it's the weight of it per yard, I'm sure is a lot less than the higher twist four ply acrylic. I love this yarn. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could tell you about this. This one is called Amber Waves. This is the, that's the fabric we're gonna use. And this is, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, but there's gonna be a minimal uh, fabric portion of it that's gonna be uh, centerpiece of the design. And then we're going to combine the two stitch patterns from the shawls we did uh, and the yarn. And in a nice, simple construction. Um, positive ease to it. And just a touch of elastic within the fabric panel to create some shaping. So that is Trisha's color. But I loved her fabric with the blue. <laughs> so I'm doing the exact same fabric for mine for matching tops with the blue and it has that same match. kind of we're gonna match we're gonna match and we're actually before our next video where we get into more details on the design process um and how to measure and determine you know how many stitch repeats you need for your sizing that you need for your body um we're gonna go shopping shoe carnival's having a bogo half off sale on sandals this week trisha's daughter just told us today so i'm like we need to go get sandals i want something that looked like the ones we wore when we were little that has the strap across the top of the foot and embossed leather, like a little flower design embossed in it. So I want some little white sandals um, with the brown leather heel to them, like the soles. <laughs> Birkenstocks. <laughs> because this just reminds me of like little dresses I would wear as a kid that we wore back in the 70s and 80s and uh, make me feel like a kid again. So, um, and it's good to revisit our childhood and things like that. That's pretty. And it also reminds me of the Calico uh, collection of fabrics that Trish has uh, from her mom who's passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Trish has a lot of her mom's fabrics from quilting. So that definitely looks like um, mm -hmm. a Terry fabric, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So the yarn, or the, yeah, the yarn is 30% off right now at Hobby Lobby. If y'all haven't heard, uh, Hobby Lobby has quit they're 40% off coupons that you were allowed to use one at the register. 
They quit putting those online. And I've heard, I think it was their staff told me they're no longer going to have sales. They're reducing all their prices. So um, if that happens, we won't have to worry about uh, what week is this to go buy yarn. That's right. <laughs> we'll just go buy it when we're ready for it and not have to wait for the sale week. Uh, now, I did get me, because I love the coral, oh, and the blue, they had a couple different blues. This one is Denim Dream. Uh, I did get me some more Coral Rodeo. I love this one. Again, same yarn. And I thought... Initially, I would get a fabric to pair with it to make a matching top with Trish. Um, and I may combine that fabric with it. But then I stumbled on this fabric. And it's got gold in the, some of the little chevrons. And I love it with that mm -hmm. yarn. So I might do one that's all plain crochet, like double or half double. Um same shape and then the same panel in the middle with the elastic for shaping and um just make it solid and not have the lace or i could do a chevron lace a subtle chevron lace so um keeping that that one open but this is just for inspiration for possibly another design so what you doing trish <laughs> trish left me she's tired <laughs> no I, I took a little walking <laughs> A little break, a little break. Yep. Our goal was to do a half hour show. We are done. <laughs> Trish, Trish is coming back. She's coming back. <laughs> Had to get up. I'm back. <laughs> Trish is back. But Good. thanks for joining us today. And I hope you come back and see our next This Week in Whips. Yes. Um, and oh, enjoy okay. our uh, Jenny and Trisha's crochet adventures. And I'll have my shawl on. Yeah. That Jenny made me. Yeah, she'll have her shawl on. And maybe she'll be, I don't know, you think you can get your other panel done on your pineapple top? Oh, hopefully I'll have my top done. Like I don't know. Hours. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, you're getting faster at it. So, I, I think I think she could get her, her pineapple top done. So, we'll see. But hopefully sometime this week we'll get on with our next top design. I'm trying not to rush her too much. Trying to be patient. And she has a family of six. She reminds me of that often. I'm like, yeah, but I got like 50 or 60 whips going. <laughs> That's my family. And my dog and my, and my husband that I hear. <laughs> so I have, a, if you count all my whips, I got a family of, of 60. Yeah. <laughs> 70. I've lost count of the whips, but. Uh, until later, thanks for joining us. You guys have a great night. Bye. Bye.